Hey guys, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I'm coming back with an update on my do-it-yourself electric motorcycle project where I'm converting a 1969 Honda Sports Cub 50cc motorcycle into a nice urban electric motorcycle. Now the last time you saw this bike it looked a little bit different it had some more parts on it so now I want to update you on some of the progress that I've been making and show you where I'm standing. Now the first thing I had to do to this bike was to remove the internal combustion parts of the bike. And so I started by draining the gasoline out of the tank here so that I could uh, take the motor off of the bike. Now I don't know so much about internal combustion engines. The little bit I do know basically comes from helping my dad work on cars when I was a kid. And so this video might be a little tough for you guys to watch if you know a lot more than I do about these types of engines. But this is a learning process so go easy on me in the comments. You see, this is one less thing I have to deal with with electric motorcycles, which is just one of the many reasons I prefer them. I don't really want to deal with gasoline all the time, whether it's pumping it up at a gas station or having to drain it to convert this thing. It's just not something I want to deal with. It smells bad, I get it all over my hands, I have to keep changing gloves before I deal with the camera for each take. It's just a hassle, so I'm pretty excited to get this thing finally converted to electric. Now we're still connected to something. To a hose? What the heck is a hose doing connected to the muffler? What? Why do you need a, where does it even go? Oh man, I got engine oil dripping out. <laughs> this thing is a mess. Oh shoot, and my, my gas ball is about to overflow for a second time. All right, hold on. Here we go. I'm gonna stop you again. There's a lot of gas in this thing. That's two liters already. All right, third bottle in. Man, my camera gear is getting so covered in gas and oil. This thing is actually full of gas. How do people still run their cars on these engines? Do people not know there is a better way? <laughs> Alright, so I finally run out of gas. I pulled a little over two liters out of this thing. I have the muffler off and let's see what's next. Uh, I guess I'll disconnect the carb and then pull off uh, whatever else is connecting this engine to the bike. I see I've got a spark plug. Um, I have no idea what this is, but whatever that is. I've got the throttle already off. I don't know, Let, let's just start unbolting stuff. This is why I work on electric motorcycles. I don't know what I'm doing here. All right, so these foot pegs, I might actually save so I can put back on the bike. Uh, they mount right onto the engine block here, but I might be able to mount them to the battery case instead when I get this thing finally converted. And it would be kind of fun to stick with these original um, foot pegs. Get that past the brake there. There we go. Yeah, so I might hang on to these, though they are completely covered with oil and crap. All right, now let's get this carb off here. All right, now I'm gonna take this drive chain cover off and see how we disconnect this, because this is gonna be interesting. Oh man, these stru screws are already stripped. There we go. Two. put these in tight, don't they? Dang it. There, got four of the five out. Just afraid this one's gonna strip even more. Let's see what happens. Oh man, that one's already so gone. Come on, baby. <clears throat> Son of a- All right, so I got four of the five bolts out of this uh, sprocket cover case here, but the last bolt here. The fifth bolt was pretty far stripped when I got here and I kind of finished it off. So now I am going to attempt to file this thing to be able to remove it. And now I just have to decide if I'm going to go for the file a slot in it method and use a slotted screwdriver or file two flats on it and try and use a wrench. 
I think I'm gonna go for the slot. Come on, stubby screwdriver, I put my faith in you. Oh, son of a... All right, slotted method is not working, but I don't think I have enough room here to file two flats in. I gotta rethink this. All right, I'm not messing around anymore. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, God, that feels good. All right. Whew. How am I supposed to get this thing off? All right, there we go. All right, so now I gotta get this chain off of here. Maybe I can pull the sprocket. Maybe I can scoot the wheel forward, and then I don't have to take off the sprocket. All right. There we go. All right, chain is off. Now what else is holding this motor on? Besides this big old bolt here. Spark plug, let's pull that. All right. Well, I think we're ready to drop this motor out. Let's see what happens. Let's get the shift lever off. Let's pull that bolt. All right, so <laughs> the engine is not coming out. All right, where is this still held in here? Oh, there's another bolt down here. I was hidden behind this chain guard piece. Let's get this out of here without destroying it. Oh. All right. There's another bolt down there. That's actually good news because it gives me another place to mount the battery. All right, so that's gonna be annoying to get down to. All right, we got one more bolt down here, but it looks like the return spring for the rear brake lever is mounted on it, so I gotta pull that off. All right, now those springs are out of the way. Let's bring in a little more here. And now we can hopefully get to that nut. Probably should have pulled the clutch cable off this first. Oh well, we can do that in a minute. All right, boys and girls, I think we're there. All right. We have one engine out, but we're still connected by one wire. Let me bring you in so you can see what I'm working with. So inside there, if you can look past this brake lever, we've got all the wires from the wiring harness. It's really hard to get in there and show you, but they're in there. Right in there. So I gotta either just snip those or try and pull them out of the connectors so I can be kind to the next person that's gonna repurpose this engine. Alright, I was able to get all of those 
connectors out of there. So electrically, this engine should be free. Now I think I just have the clutch cable here to worry about. Let's try taking the cover off of this. I'm just gonna stick that spring back in there so somebody has it. All right, gasket, don't wanna forget that. Looks like that goes. Roll this motor back up. Alright, so that was more work than I thought it was going to be, but I have successfully removed the engine, which was one of the biggest hurdles in this project. So now we have a motorcycle sans engine and we can start moving forward with how I'm gonna build this into an electric motorcycle. So I'll start with the parts that I got from EM3 EV and I'll show you what I have here. Uh, EM3 EV is just a really good uh, electric bike and light motorcycle uh, parts supplier. They're based out of uh, Beijing, I think it is. It's somewhere in China, I think they're in Beijing. Um, and it's run by a British expat, so you get sort of this nice uh, Western service, Eastern prices kind of combination. Um, EM3 EV doesn't pay me anything. I'm not sponsored by them. I've been buying parts of them for a while and I just like the company, so I like to support them. So I'm gonna show you what I got from them. All right, so here's the motor. This is a QS motor. It's a 205 V3. It's rated for 3000 watts continuous. And I'm gonna be running it at about 5000 watts peak, which is certainly within its uh, comfort zone. That's gonna be about 70 amps or so at 72 volts. Um, the thing that's special about this motor, and I actually had to have this one special ordered, is that it's got this uh, drum brake over here. And I got this so I could continue to use the same brake setup on this bike. Uh, the only thing is that because this is wider, this is about 200 millimeters wide, and the uh, rear swing arm is, I believe, 165 millimeters or so, I'm gonna have to widen the swing arm, so I'm gonna have to chop the swing arm in the middle, weld in an extension, then I'm gonna have to make a uh, longer uh, swing arm uh, axle here. So I'm gonna have to do all that to make this motor fit, but I think this is gonna be the perfect motor for this bike. Next, I've got all the other electronic goodies in here. Now the rest of this all comes from EM3 EV as well. Let's see what I've got here. Looks like, uh, this is the Sabaton controller. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful controller. All right, so this is gonna be my 72 volt controller. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna pull probably 70 amps from here, which will be about 4.9 kilowatts, uh, or actually closer to five kilowatts with a 72 volt battery. Uh, I, I might drop that power down a little bit. The nice thing is these are programmable, so that might actually even be too much power for this little bike. So we'll see how it goes, but I can always play with that uh, using the controller. Just another advantage of electric motorcycles is with a simple USB cable, you can totally change the parameters and the performance of the bike. What, what else do I have in here? Here I've got what appears to be the throttle. Yeah, there we go. So I've got a nice half-twist throttle. I really like the half-twist because you can sort of do cruise control by twisting it partway and then just holding it with your hand. You don't have to keep your wrist twisted. So I always like these half-twists. It's always been my favorite type of throttle. Here I've got the display. I'm gonna have to decide if I want to go with this display. I might hide it somewhere. Um, I mean, it's, it's fairly clean looking, but I like the stock look of the bike without a whole lot on the bars. So I'll have to decide. It will be nice to have a display there, but it's just sort of a trade-off because I was hoping to keep this thing looking as vintage and stock as possible. So I'm not sure how I feel about that yet, but we'll see if this gets mounted on the handlebars or if I just sort of hide it somewhere. Next, I've got my brake levers here. And the nice thing about these is they are mechanical levers. This bike does not have hydraulic brakes, of course. It's a 50-year-old bike and it's also pretty small, so it doesn't really need them. And so with these uh, mechanical levers, I can still use the existing front brake just like it is. And then for the rear brake, I can decide if I wanna put this on and have a hand lever up front, or if I wanna stick with the foot brake um, for the rear. And to be perfectly honest, I actually prefer having a hand brake on an electric motorcycle. Because there's no clutch lever on the left side, you can do that. And to me, I just feel like I have 
better fine-tuned control when I'm using my fingers to break as opposed to when I'm using my foot. I, I know the foot brake is uh, obviously traditional on motorcycles, but one of the nice things about electric is that you can actually upgrade to a handbrake. So I'll have to see what I do with this one. It'll be easiest to leave it as a foot brake because I don't have to change anything, but it will be kind of nice for the handling and the operation just to upgrade to a handbrake for the rear. We'll see how that goes. At this point, I needed to box up the motorcycle because I'm actually going to finish the build at my parents' house. I don't have access to a welder in my apartment, and my dad has a really nice Miller welder, so he's going to let me borrow it and finish the build there. So I'm boxing the bike up to send it down to him in Florida, and to get the box small enough to fit the shipping regulations, I had to do a little re-engineering on it. It's amazing how quickly a big cardboard box loses its structural integrity when you make a few cuts in it. But fortunately, I had a real electric motorcycle on hand, a Zero FXS, to keep the bike from spilling back out while I turned this into a new, smaller box. Alright, I've finally gotten the motorcycle boxed up. The next step is to send this down to Florida, and then I will follow up with a video uh, next showing how I'm going to build the battery, actually showing the construction of the battery, because that's what I'll be doing next, building that 72-volt lithium-ion battery. And then the video after that will be uh, the rest of the fabrication work on this bike, installing those components that I just showed you and uh, getting it all together into a functioning, working electric motorcycle. Finally, this project is going on a lot longer than I thought it would. Uh, that tends to happen with my projects, but that's the way it is. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Last but not least, time to announce the winner of the book giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Debuster. So congratulations. Let me know which one of my books you'd like. If you're into electric motorcycles, maybe you'll like Electric Motorcycles 2019, or I've got the DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, or the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide books. So let me know which one you'd like and where to send it. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment below this video, say anything you want, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.